Has the dreaded 40 been and gone? Or is it fast approaching? First of all, let me say, if you have turned 40, or you're about to turn 40, or you're older than 40, congratulations. Because let's face it, not everybody gets the privilege to turn that age. So, congratulations. But I hear someone say, yes, Dr. Katie, but does that mean it's too late for me to get pregnant now that I'm 40 and older? Keep watching because I will be sharing with you all the tips that you need to take on board now that you are 40 and older and you are trying for a baby. Don't be too quick to leave this video though because at the very end, there is a very important tip that is often overlooked that can significantly impact your ability to become pregnant even when you do all of the things that I will mention earlier on in the video. My response to the question of, is it too late to fall pregnant after the age of 40 is, not necessarily. Look, we do know that it is scientifically proven that fertility starts to decline after the age of 35 for reasons that I will explain later on in the video. And because of this, it naturally makes it a little bit more challenging to fall pregnant after the age of 35. But we all know that there are countless women who have been able to conceive and have successful pregnancies after the age of 35. And in the era in which we're living in, there are more and more women choosing to delay motherhood. And as a result, we are seeing more and more women conceive and have successful pregnancies at 40 and older. Being that it will naturally be a bit more challenging to fall pregnant after the age of 40, both you and your partner must be very intentional about how you choose to go about it. And that will entail you both deciding to use time wisely in your journey of trying to conceive. As promised earlier, let's look at the science behind why it becomes harder for you to fall pregnant after the age of 40. A woman is born with all the eggs that she's ever going to have in her lifetime. And these are formed while she herself is a fetus in her mother's womb. This pool of egg that a woman has is known as the ovarian reserve. This ovarian reserve will decrease over time and by the time this girl reaches puberty, she's only left with a fraction of eggs that she was born with. Then there is a further gradual decline in the ovarian reserve with each passing period. After the age of 35, not only is there a reduction in the number of eggs that a woman has left over, but there is also a decline in the quality of the eggs that she has left over. The decline in the quality of the eggs happened simply because the eggs have been around for a longer period of time. So after the age of 35, not only do we have fewer eggs, but a greater proportion of those eggs left over are likely to have genetic error within their chromosomes. So let's assume that this genetically abnormal egg is able to be fertilized by a sperm cell and it then goes on to successfully implant itself, leading to a full-term pregnancy. The fetus that will be born from this originally genetically abnormal egg is more likely to have a genetic condition such as Down syndrome, Pato's syndrome or Edwards syndrome. It could possibly have other genetic conditions, but these are the most common ones that result from genetically abnormal eggs. These genetically abnormal eggs carry a higher risk of miscarriage. Hey, by the way, did you watch the video on this channel about how to improve your egg quality? You haven't? That's okay. I'm going to leave a link right here as well as in the description box so that you can go and watch that video that talks in detail about the science behind egg quality and how you can improve your egg quality despite your advancing age. So after you finish watching that video, make sure that you head on over to that video so that you can further increase your chance of falling pregnant despite your advancing age. Now, onto these long awaited ways of how you can get pregnant at 40 and older, as well as the associated strategies. The first thing to say is that many other women who have been able to get pregnant naturally at 40 and older. Remember, many women will still have a reasonable ovarian reserve. And although a greater proportion of those eggs are likely to be genetically abnormal, there are still quite a few eggs that may be genetically perfectly okay. So even though you may be 40 or older, 
do not completely dismiss the natural way of falling pregnant. And there may still be a great chance of you having a genetically normal child. But one word I would say should be at the forefront of your mind for both you and your partner is intentional. So what do I mean by that? In addition to both you and your husband enjoying sex and building intimacy, you must both bear in mind the result that you intend to see at the end of that encounter. And that is a baby. But let me balance things. You must not be stressed. You mustn't be having sex when your body is under excessive amounts of stress, expecting to fall pregnant. What I'm saying is, if all that you can think about 24 hours of the day is, I must fall pregnant today, I must fall pregnant tonight, then you are likely to put your body under excessive amount of stress. And what will happen is the stress hormone like cortisol and adrenaline will be released. And when these hormones are released, particularly when they are at high levels, they work against you being able to conceive. So when we as doctors encourage patients that are trying to conceive to relax, it's not something that we say for the sake of it. Being excessively stressed can actually work against your fertility. This leads me nicely onto strategy number one. Get a fertility workup done as soon as you know that you are trying to fall pregnant. And you must do this fertility workup even when you're at the stage of trying to conceive naturally. Why? Remember, you don't have time to waste. If trying it the natural way is not going to work, you would rather save time and consider some of the other ways that I'm going to discuss later on in this video. So a fertility workup done early is going to work in your favor. So what does this fertility workup include? Number one is blood test. The blood test will include checking for FSH and LH. These two hormones are key because they stimulate the follicles that are found within the ovaries and leading to one dominant follicle releasing an egg. Then we have AMH. This test gives us information about your ovarian reserve. How many eggs do you have left over? Then we have a thyroid function test. If your thyroid gland is not working properly and there is an imbalance in your thyroid hormone, you are very unlikely to fall pregnant, especially if the disease is severe. Then we have prolactin, estrogen, and progesterone. Progesterone is a hormone that gives us an idea of whether or not you are actually ovulating. So even though you may be having periods, you may not necessarily be releasing an egg, which is what happens during ovulation. And a normal prolactin level will give us an indication about whether you are actually releasing an egg with each cycle. If your prolactin level is very low, it means you are not ovulating and instantly your doctor will know that other strategies should be adopted so that you are again not wasting time. When you do these blood tests actually matters. So let me share this with you so that when you go to your doctor and he or she gives you the fertility workup blood test form to do, you know exactly when you should be doing these blood tests. FSH, LH, estrogen, thyroid function test and prolactin can all be done between day two and day five of your cycle. Progesterone, on the other hand, can be done between day two and day five, at which stage it should be low, but it must also be repeated on day 21 of your cycle, at which stage we are expecting it to be much higher than it was between day two and day five. And this will help confirm the fact that you are indeed ovulating. The second part of your fertility workup includes scans. The first type of scan that should be done is a transvaginal ultrasound. This type of scan will look at the anatomy of your uterus. It will make sure that your uterus is of a normal shape. It is also helpful at looking at the lining of the uterus. Again, making sure that there is not going to be anything that is going to obstruct the implantation of the fertilized egg. For example, a large uterine fibroid. And then the same scan will go on to assess your ovaries. It will look at how many follicles are present within your ovaries at that point in time and will give you an antral follicle count. 
the radiologist, that is the person who's going to do the scan, giving you an antrophollicle count as part of the report is very important, especially if you decide that you're going to go down the route of IVF. Depending on your past medical history, your fertility specialist may also want to do a HSG scan. This is basically a special type of X-ray that looks at the patency of your fallopian tubes. It also helps us to assess the uterine cavity along with the shape of the uterine cavity with greater precision. Why did I mention past medical history? Let me explain. If you are a woman who has had multiple sexually transmitted infections, you have or you've been told in the past that you had pelvic inflammatory disease, or even you were diagnosed with severe endometriosis, so what will happen as a result of these conditions, there's going to be scarring and adhesions in the fallopian tubes. This blockage of the fallopian tube is always bad news. What we want is for the fallopian tube to be open and free flowing. Remember, when the ovaries release the egg during ovulation, the egg sits in the fallopian tube and the healthy sperm cells swim towards this healthy and open fallopian tube in order to meet the egg for fertilization to happen. So if it is blocked, not only will the release egg not be able to enter the fallopian tube, but the sperm cells, as healthy and as strong as they may be, will not be able to get into the fallopian tube in order to meet the egg. So if you have this type of past medical history, doing an HSG early will give you an invaluable piece of information. Yes, even if all of the other results and the transvaginal ultrasound scan are normal, if you have this type of past medical history, I would argue it is crucial for you to do a HSG because if your tubes are blocked, you are wasting time and valuable ovarian reserve trying to conceive naturally because scientifically speaking, it's just not going to happen. So if you get the information that the HSG scan will give you early, then you as a couple and your fertility specialist may decide to adopt other ways for you to conceive sooner rather than later. Strategy number two is that after doing the blood test as well as the relevant imaging modalities, your fertility specialist must carry out a vaginal examination on you as the woman. Mm uncomfortable I hear you think? Yes, but dearest lady, let me explain. I have done many vaginal examinations on women. What I'm looking for is any abnormal findings during that vaginal and pelvic exam that will prevent the woman from getting pregnant. For example, if after insertion of my finger, the woman complains of pain, it is likely that she may be suffering from pelvic inflammatory disease or an STD that has not manifested as symptoms and she doesn't know that she has, or she may have endometriosis. So if there is significant pain when the doctor inserts the finger, then there needs to be further investigation because that pain could prevent you from getting pregnant. Also, a vaginal examination is important because after I insert my finger, if what I feel does not feel normal, then I'm using a speculum, one of these. Why? Because it will stretch the vaginal wall and allow your fertility specialist to look at your anatomy. For example, is the cervix easily found? Or does he or she have to do several maneuvers in order to expose your cervix? Remember, the cervix is the neck of your womb, which formulates the entrance into your uterus. So its position is very important. There is a video on this channel about how the position of your cervix may affect your sexual position. I will leave a link to it right here and in the description box. Make sure you check out that video after you finish watching this one. If your cervix is not in the normal position, then it may well impact your ability to fall pregnant, especially if you're going about it the natural way. 
Another benefit of using a speculum is that after the cervix has been found and its position has been assessed, we can now use this device, which is called the uterine sound. And it is inserted into the entrance of the cervix known as the cervical os. It gives us information about whether or not the cervix is open, which means that it will be free flowing for sperm cells to swim their way through to enter into the uterus. Or is the cervical os closed because of a condition known as cervical stenosis? Obviously, if the cervix is closed, there is no way that the sperm cells are ever going to be able to get into your uterus in the first place. I'm so glad that we are in a generation where we're walking away from the mindset that infertility is just a woman's issue because we all now know it's not. So remember our keyword, intentional. The reason I say that is because there is no point for you as a woman, because of your advancing age, you're doing everything that you're supposed to do, doing all of your fertility workup, and you as a couple are trying for the baby in the natural way only to realize three or six months down the line that it hasn't happened. But that hasn't happened because you have overlooked the male aspect of fertility and how important it is for you to get pregnant. So the third strategy will be because we are intentional and we realize that time is of the essence, both your husband and yourself will be doing a fertility workup together. So the first aspect of a male's fertility workup includes a semen analysis. This basically assesses parameters such as sperm count, sperm motility, which is the, uh, the sperm cell's ability to swim, which looks at also their morphology. That means the shape of the sperm cells, as well as looking at the sperm volume. Is he able to deliver a big enough volume of sperm in your reproductive system for pregnancy to happen? If abnormalities have been found with the semen analysis, then further investigations need to be carried out, like an ultrasound of the testicular region, and at this stage, if further investigations are needed, then you as a couple are considering whether you want to reach out to a urologist who is a doctor that basically looks at the male's reproductive system in more detail. If you are 40 and older and all of these investigations have come back as normal, then I would argue that it would be reasonable for you as a couple to try to conceive naturally. So how long should you keep trying naturally if you're 40 and older? My answer to that is three months. I think three months is reasonable if it hasn't happened in that time because again, we're being intentional, time is of the essence and ovarian reserve is of utmost important. Then three months, I would say, is a reasonable time for you to have tried. And if it hasn't happened in that time, that's when you need to start having a discussion with your fertility specialist. The second way that you may fall pregnant if you're 40 and older is to make active use of fertility assisting tools such as the ovulation kit, the body basal thermometer, and understanding the characteristics of your cervical mucus and using that to your advantage to know when you need to be sexually intimate so that it increases your chance of falling pregnant. With the use of these fertility assisting tools like the ovulation kit, the BBT and the understanding of your cervical mucus, you can fall pregnant much faster. I have done two extensive videos addressing these topics. It would be literally impossible for me to replicate all of that information in this video. It will just simply make the video too long. So I will leave a description to those videos up here and in the description box. Check it out after watching this video. But very briefly, for the sake of this video, using these tools help you to work out your fertile window. The ovulation kit detects the surge in LH and ovulation, which is the release of the egg, tends to happen 24 hours after the LH surge. So knowing that the egg will be released 24 hours after the LH surge, it will help you as a couple to know when to have sex because pregnancy is not going to happen without sex. Duh. On a more serious note, an egg normally survives for 24 hours 
in the reproductive system before it dies off if it's not fertilized. So if you and your partner know roughly when your fertile window will be and that the sperm cells can survive in a woman's reproductive tract for five days, you can start being sexually intimate in the days leading up to your fertile window and your egg being released. So you can have healthy sperms lurking around waiting to fertilize your egg as soon as it is released. And using these kits as well as the texture of your cervical mucus makes working out this timing a breeze. Just go and watch the videos to get more detail. The third way for you to fall pregnant if you're 40 and older is for you to use IVF in vitro fertilization. In vitro fertilization is simply the fertilization of an egg with a sperm cell that happens outside of the body, classically in a small dish. And this type of procedure will be carried out in a purposefully built lab. When the egg is fertilized with the sperm cell, even though it's outside of the body, the egg that has now been fertilized with a sperm cell starts to multiply and form what we refer to as an embryo. But the fertilized egg is not immediately inserted into the woman's uterus. In order to give it a better chance of survival, once it gets into the womb, the fertilized egg is stored in an incubator for a couple of days. Once the embryo reaches a certain level, that is when it's inserted into the woman's uterus with the hope that the embryo is at a strong enough stage to be able to implant itself into the woman's uterus. We then pray that it progresses into a successful pregnancy and gives us a beautiful child or sometime children at the end of the gestation period. So those are the three main ways for you to get pregnant at the age of 40 and older. Now on to the key information I promised you I would leave to the end of the video. The first is a healthy lifestyle. Ladies, there's never going to be a good enough substitute for a healthy lifestyle. You must have a good and healthy diet. Stay away from all forms of inflammatory food. On this channel, I have done a video on the fertility boosting diet. Go check it out right now so that you know what you need to eat and what you need to stay away from in order to help you along your fertility journey. Also, do not smoke. Do not smoke. Watch that video again so that you understand the impact of smoking on your egg quality, but also on the quantity of your eggs. And then the four important supplements that you must take when you are actively trying to conceive are folic acid, coenzyme Q A, vitamin D, and omega-3 fatty acids. And lastly, avoid stress at all costs. As I mentioned before, the impact of stress on the body is that it fights against pregnancy. Pregnancy can still happen, of course, but if you are someone who has struggled to get pregnant and you are a little bit older, stress will be an added factor that will work against you falling pregnant. So do not underestimate the power of psychological therapy, prayer, meditating on the word of God and support from your family and friends. This video will be no different to all of my other videos where I share a word of hope to build your faith and to help you to trust God as you wait on him to conceive, whether it's your first child at the age of 40 and older, or you're desiring more children, the word of God never changes and it still applies to your situation. So hold on to him as you wait, remembering that the scripture says that the Lord honors his word more than his name. As a Christian doctor, I do understand the scientific fact and the fact that God has blessed humankind with the ability to understand science and make the various scientific discoveries. But I also believe in the word of God. I believe that God's word is supreme over all situations. So today I share the word of God to encourage you as you wait on him to conceive that precious child, whether it's your first child or whether it's another child that you are believing for. I share the promises of God in the fact that he will come through for you and that he is able to answer your heart's desire. I read today from Romans chapter 4 verses 17 to 21. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. 
in the presence of him who he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Who, contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was able to perform. Has the Lord promised you a child? It doesn't matter what your age is. God can work miracles. For with God, all things are possible. Be encouraged. Stay strong as you wait. I am praying fervently for you. And I'm believing for God's miracle in your life. God bless you. And I look forward to seeing you in our next video. Take care.